Hi, my name is Cathy Miller, and this week we're going to turn this into the first part of a road. So out in the real world, roads are everywhere. They're in every country, they're in every colour. They're from jet black tarmac through to really pale weathered tarmac. And it's up to you what you go for, what suits your area, whether you tar over your cracks or whether you have them nice and open. So what are we doing? Well, this is a bit of foam core that's cut for the size of well, it's the front section of my city. It carries on along here, a long way, and up here. And this is a very simple bit of road. So I thought I'd just demonstrate how I would do a road. And the other key ingredient that I use to make my roads is foam. This is a simple foam sheet you can get in any hobby craft or craft store. Um, it smells a bit strong when you get it. But actually, it's very simple. It's very easy to carve cracks into. And it's very easy to paint and get a really good realistic tarmac effect on here. It bends incredibly easily, so you can use it to go around anywhere that you like. And all in all, it's a very cheap and easy method of doing roads. Now, this was 80p for one of these A3 sheets, and um, I'll need two sheets to do this, so that's fine. First of all, how big is a road? Well, a road can be as big or as small as you like it to be. It is a model, but I'm going on a standard 12 foot width for a road. You could make them a little bit smaller if it's a city or a rural area, and um, 12 foot's the standard sort of interstate sizes we have at the moment, but this is a nice ornate stone building, so I want a little bit of space outside of it. Um, my other um, thought is that I'm gonna have a parking on both sides, so I'm gonna leave about eight scale feet for that, and then my pavement's gonna be about six scale feet. So the number one thing that you need, scale model ruler, makes it all very easy. So I'm gonna have a six foot, I'm gonna have an eight foot, I'm gonna have a 12 foot, I'm gonna have another 12 foot, I'm gonna have an eight foot, and it'll be there, and then I'm gonna have a six foot, which will be there. Okay, starting from that edge. So now I'm gonna get my long ruler out and just join up my two pavement sections. There we go, so that's where I'm gonna actually cut my road and this bit is, um, it's gonna stop about a six foot short of there so it comes around a bit. But I also want to put a camber on and the camber's the bit in the road where the water runs off towards the drains at the edges. Now I'll do the drains in a future week so for now all I need to do is do that camber. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all this ready to go, I'm gonna draw my road out on it, I'm gonna do all the work when it's flat and then I'm gonna put it across the camber at the end. And the reason I do that is I've found out over the years that if you don't, you can end up with a bit of a, um, I guess the word I'm looking for is um, dip as you come off the edge of the camber because the foam is quite squashy. So when it comes to it, I'm gonna put the camber on just to um, stick at the moment. And I'm gonna use this as my camber. It's just gonna go roughly in the middle. I'm just gonna glue these down with normal white glue. This is actually tacky glue. It's supposed to be a bit thicker but I haven't noticed the difference. Now, the one thing you'll find is you need to weight things when you glue them onto foam board or it just warps up, which if you're gonna glue the foam board down eventually isn't a problem, but if you're like me and you don't really want to glue it down, then you're better off um, putting it in place now. So let me line that up roughly on center. Right, I'm gonna put this on the floor and put some weights on it. So let's get on with our road itself. So these two road pieces, I know that my road is actually 25 centimetres um, long, this way around. So I want the best edges to butt. Now if you butt them, you can see a join. I don't like that very much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlap them and with a sharp knife, I'm gonna cut through them and I'm gonna cut through on a zigzag with a sharp exacto knife. Now I buy my X-Acto blades, 100 in a box, because I go through so many. So a nice sharp X-Acto knife, and you need this to be vertical, and you just want a little zigzag. I mean, it's gotta be, using your tip, you want it to kind of just whip its way across. You can't go off the edge or you'll end up with a gap, but what you're looking for is a crack that's really crack-like. We can do a lot of cracks. 
And um, if it doesn't look too good, you can always fill it later. Um, if you don't weight your foam, then you will end up with a sort of movement. So there we go. So I've got that and I've got this. Discard those. And then when I put them together, they will butt up exactly. And it's, um, you still get a crack and a gap, but it's just that little bit more. And if you glue them with a little bit of pressure in so that they're, and weight them, then it becomes a much better looking crack than you would have had otherwise. So now what I want to do is um, put on the rest of the cracks and I find it easier to do it at this stage. And I know that roughly my road is, um, well, it's roughly down the middle here. So my cracks will get less as I get out. Now you can go overboard and I'm gonna do one section that's overboard round here so you can see how I would do that. But most of it's gonna be just average cracks. And if you wanna go overboard, you literally just put loads of cracks in, lining them all up, and this is what you get in a really crazed position, you know, where the tarmac has really gone badly. And you can easily um, see pictures of this. Um, you just need to go and look on, well, any good photo site. So I'm just using a um, dental pick. I use the back of an X-Acto knife sometimes. You have to watch with this, you don't put it in too far. And then the cracks kind of come out um, and they, they tend to branch off each other. So, I mean, I'm not gonna put thousands of cracks on this, but I'm gonna do enough that you can see how I would do it. So, um, and especially with this crack round here, I'm gonna make sure that a lot of my cracks come through this and round. So it just ties it in a bit better. So I carried on adding loads more cracks into the road as I went along, uh, making sure they all branched out from each other and they looked cohesive based on photos that I'd looked at over the years. Then I, I laid out my road flat, not onto the actual base, but just flat for now because it's easier to cut. I cut out the section that wasn't road, which is towards the front of the layout, and then I laid it all in place. So I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just going to line it up, I'll trim the underneath later. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna, because there's a load sticking out and I don't want it to be globbed with glue, but I don't need it. I'm just going to um, put glue along the edges. Now, what you want is to make sure that when you put the glue, um, there's plenty on there, but you don't want to um, pull it too low across the camber. And this is what I was saying about there's a camber. You want to make sure that, um, I'll probably put another strip, that it cambers down. So your road ends about there. And um, so you don't need to glue further in than that. Put it on. Now there are proper foam glues, etc. I tend to do everything with white glue because I have it. Um, so there we go. Line up the front and just smooth it along here and along here, but don't um, smooth it too much you know, in the middle. So under here, where there's a lot of um, various bits, I'm just going to put a little bit more glue so that the end really does stick. And this end is budding up. So there's that pulled out. I'm gonna line it up. And you want it to be practically on top of it so that it doesn't have a gap, otherwise you'll end up with an awful gap. So there's that end. And there's that end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that's, to make sure this stays together and I have problems with it forcing itself apart. I'm just gonna put some masking tape to hold it together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull that down like that so it's completely flat. And on this side, I'm gonna do the same. Pull it down so it's completely together. And then one in the middle. Just need to find the middle of your camber. Up there. And um, I've, I've pushed them together in my life before now and thought they were great. And then I've come back and they've gone 
as they've sort of eased a bit. So just to make sure that happens. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is wait, put it on the floor and wait it and leave it for it to dry. So this is glued. The next thing to do is just trim it to size. So I'm just literally going to trim this edge off along here. So this is where my um, tunnel is. So I'm just going to mark on here the centre point and the road so I know where it is. Do it in here. Please make sure you use a water-based paint. Anything enamel, acrylic, whatever, will cause it all to rise. Which is not a good look on a foam road. I do have, I have done them, because I always thought they might go back down again. They don't. So I've got some water, and I've got some normal artist acrylics. Now, I'm a great fan of artist acrylics for this, because they're cheap. And I would never use a white, because I just feel you end up with two blue a grey for a road. So I always use natural, which is just a little bit yellowier. And put that in there. And we want a little bit of, I'm using Payne's grey, which is a grey. Obviously it's a grey because it's Payne's grey. Um, probably a little bit of a blob. I'll put it at the top because I might not use all of that. Um, I just need a brush. This one and just a bit of the black into here till I get the right colour. Now I know the colour I'm after in my head, but please go and check it against a sort of prototype photo, really. And then what I do is I just tip a bit of water in and thin it out a bit. Okay, so now I've got just this little soupy mix and decide if that's thin enough that when it settles down and dries, you can see the bit underneath. Probably. I might just thin it a little bit more. Top tip actually, sometimes it's um, best not to test in the middle of your road. So what I'm going to do now is just put it on down my road. Try not to dent it too much or you could lose some of that camber you've put on. Okay, so this is nearly dry and you can see that um, as it dries it darkens down quite considerably. So what we're going to do now is put on another layer of a different type of material. And this is basically some MIG pigments and water. So I've got ashes white, black smoke, and industrial city dirt. And those are probably the three colors I use the most if I'm not rusting something. Now these will dry to a very different finish. So it's all dried off. Just to get it a little bit more smooth, I used a rough sponge and I just swirled it around and it just gives the um, pigments a little bit more coverage and, and puts them in and just smooths out any brush marks that you might see um, coming through underneath. So the final layer I'm gonna put on with a sponge. I'm just gonna put this gray layer on. Um, it's the same paint as yesterday. It's probably thickened up a bit overnight, but not a huge amount to it. And I'm literally just gonna go along and um, just splurge it. So it will also absorb slightly differently because it's now on to a slightly more powdery base. So that will make a big difference. There we go. That's going on nicely. Now this layer is optional. I did think my road was a little brown having put the pigments on. And so as a result, I just wanted to add a bit more gray in. I also wanted the texture just to have a little bit of a stipple from the sponge, so it became a little bit more tarmac. But bear in mind, these are still incredibly thin layers. So the underlying foam texture, which is what we want for the tarmac, is still coming through. But what I'm gonna do now, just for my final coat, just to seal everything really, is just put on some matte varnish. And this is because, um, you know, I've used things like, um, well, basically some quite thin coats of paint, which seem to come off very easily in my experience later. But also I've used um, a number of um, pigments and things like that. So just a little bit of matte varnish just adds just enough density on now to get it all to sit nicely. And uh, not a huge amount, just enough to give it a bit of a top coat. But I suspect like most of you, most of us, you will be scenicking near here and, you know, you don't want your scenery to leach into your, start lifting your road. 
We're not there yet, so what I'm gonna do first is put on my patches, some of which will be lighter and some of which will be darker. And this area, when I put some gloss varnish on and then a camera stopped, so I rushed off to, to sort the camera and then they sat and they pulled off the layer beneath. So I'm gonna sort those as well. So I'm gonna put a number of patches on. I've got some rubber black and I've got some, um, probably some more of this actually, which is the very thick, uh, very thin gray one to put, build up another layer. And what I'm gonna do is get my scribing tool and just make some patches. So across here where there's a, a number of patches, I think there's gonna be a bit of a variety. So some of these are gonna have darker patches and some of them are gonna have lighter patches and I'm just gonna put it on with a brush. Um, and these little um, guides help me, I can just go up to the edge. For a bit of variety, I even use my sort of watery solution of pigments to add on a few more patches. Right, we're on to the final stretch. So we just need to just give, tie these in, they look a bit, a bit paint-like really. And they've had their two coats on these, one coat on the blacks and one coat on the others. And what I'm gonna do is I want to put a grey on, but if I'm honest, my factory grey looks brown. My industrial city dirt looks brown. So I'm gonna start mostly with just Ashes White, which is a white pigment. I'm not gonna necessarily mix a lot, but I want it to be uniform. And bear in mind, I've got a lot more roads I'm going to do. So this will all go towards those. And then I'm gonna put a little bit, and I mean a little bit of black smoke in, because it doesn't take much. So uh, there we go. And then I've got a gray. I can just use to just give the final brushing on here to tie these in more than anything else, to knock them back a bit. And I like a chalky finish on my roads. I just feel it adds a little bit. It's not like they handled a huge amount. You've sealed it, so if you do do any um, scenery, the whole road surface isn't gonna come up. But what you will get is just a little bit of variety. So the trick is just to just scrub it in. I've got a lot on, I find it goes on quite streaky. So I just get my sponge out and I just literally knock it back a bit. So we just end up with a nice final, not too solid result. There we go. So there's my road. What it needs now is just its cracks doing. So I've got a, just a fine pen and I can see all my cracks. So the trouble is they're not showing up anymore. So I just go through. I did once try and do it with a MIG wash. Let's just say it bubbles your foam. So let's not go there. You can add on extra finer cracks now if you want. This is the time to go to town on the cracks. Okay, so this is the final result on my road. As you can see, um, the cracks have all gone in. There's um, a little bit of pattern to it. You can still feel the um, texture of the foam coming through. And I think you know, if you get a bit worried about it, the more you rub it and get it to set down, the more it looks realistic. Um, what's interesting to see is these are the thinly painted bits, these are the thicker painted bits, and I don't think they look as real. Um, I might well still go back and just add a little bit over them just to tone them down a bit more. But we're not on the final configuration yet, they've still got the sidewalks or pavements if you're from the UK to go in, and it's also got the road markings. So that's the next couple of weeks. Girl Kathy gets very excited about a road trip. You do it. You know, this is fun. It goes like 
Jill Cafe is going to take it home with Carl when the road's built. Not finished yet. She's still just doing that bit. But I ain't going to go out. She does have to put the road markings first. That's boring. I want to go now. 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 Come on, let's go, Jill Cafe. Let's go. You know your feet don't reach the ground. Pedals. No, of course they don't. You're too small. I mean, you're end scale. It's a H.O. scale car. You found an N scale car. Ooh. Well, as an aside from N scale, Kathy, I quite like the road. Looking good. Kind of lacking road markings and pavements, but I hear they're coming. So, not bad so far. Not bad. Will N scale, Kathy, ever shut up about the road trip? Tune in next week and see what kind of headache the rest of the mini Kathys have. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, then subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Kathy Millet Modelling, or on my website, kathymillet.co.uk. See you next week when we're going to add the concrete sidewalks. <laughs>